Doop de doop de doo. I'll try not to be a rambling idiot like normal. Uh, da, da, da. Parts, 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 gloves, gloves. So, as Maximum Batty would say, um, da, dum, 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 dum. what am I doing? Oh, uh, bug would not pass emissions. Somewhat simple. The idle's off. Idle CO2s are off. I don't know what I did last year. This carburetor's leaking a bit. I noticed now. Well, I guess we'll be figuring out why it's doing that. Well, anywho, uh, so yes, we figure out what the deal with the carburetor is. Because the last time when I finally got it to pass, it was like really passing. So, uh, time for an oil change. Uh, I know it's time for an oil change because the lifters are rattling. So that means they want to be adjusted. And I've already ripped it off because... The reason most Volkswagen bugs catch on fire is because we tend to put this plastic uh, fuel filter right by all these sparky things and all this electrical stuff. And this is Arizona, so they rot. And then they decide to f find something hot and sparky. And since it's Arizona and boiling hot, the engines are usually running pretty warm and all that baloney. So, yes, yeah, stuff happens. Plus, spark plug wires are probably bad, probably shooting sparks out in the atmosphere so yeah throw that away it should run fine without it no of course i'll be uh replacing with a standard fuel line probably time to change all the fuel lines since these were original with the car never messed with them when i got it just been lazy and driving it every day and i will get a in fact i'll show you a number so it's a napa gold 3031 mm, it's got stuff in there Steel fuel filter that's quarter inch diameter. So, but the steel bad boy, not here. It might work, but if it started leaking because of hose clamps and stuff, uh, yeah, hose clamps could still leak. But I'm gonna move this up by the gas tank where it probably should be. There's a little arrow too much where you go. So, there you go. If you want to do this little modification, I'm giving you the part numbers, at least the Napa part number. I'm never can trash for efforts to some other stuff. I'm going to use those cheesy hose clamps in there. Use some nice Adel or Idol or however you pronounce that dude's name who invented these worm drive hose clamps. So yeah, that's the basics of it. So this is just the initial first screenshot, whatever, baloney. See, I told you I'd ramble on way too much. Damn it. Okay, so I'm going to stop and get to work and show you back when some progress is done. Dr. Pepper cans no longer good. And I stopped drinking soda. What am I going to do?
Okay, doke. Um, I managed to get the new exhaust on. Not the new exhaust. It's been here before. I just wanted it back on. So basically, I've got nothing accomplished practically. Oh, well, I did change this line. There you go. Uh, I'm gonna do the front one first. Go in a moment before I start changing the other ones. And I'll show you why in a moment. Boom, boom, boom. Um, took the top of the carburetor off to check the. Oh, it's up there. That's the distributor. Um, took the uh, top of the carburetor off to see the float level. Yeah, and I then remembered that none of these are really adjustable floats that, that I know of. There might be some that are. This one's not. So I bent it in a way you're not supposed to. It's because they're plastic, really easy to break. But that'll give me a tiny bit less flow level. We'll see what that does. It might be a bad idea. Now, back to the fuel line. I'll show you the problem I have up front, which is pretty amazingly stupid. First of all, uh, should have did this without the gas tank being full. That was already a little bit cracked, a little bit cracked more. I'm gonna dig one of those, but there's enough. If you, as long as you have a long crowbar, there's enough uh, leeway to get this tank up. And of course it's full, like I said. Um, amazingly, this hose hasn't failed. You see how I got it capped off anyways. If you look at that clamp there, it's the original 1973 fuel hose, so. Amazing this thing hasn't had a problem before. I thought I could just get underneath it and change it, but as you can see, there's a dividing wall between. It's not like a standard beetle where the tank's just sitting right above the belly pan. Crawl under, crawl under. Oh, this way. Other way door. And as you can see, it goes through that bulkhead and then attaches to the belly pan like normal, but I can now pull that out, pull this through since it's loose up front. Uh, well, that's the vapor line for the vapor system that's technically not fixed. So yeah, so I can pull this out and I can make it with new line, pull it out, make it with new line and add my filter. And I still have my filter down here. And I, next time I'll be smart and maybe uh, run it down on gas before I change the fuel filter. But anywho, that's what I'm doing next. And you can kind of get the uh, gist of that. So, on to that.
Okay, and then as you can see I got connected. One last thing you want to do before you drop the tank down is sure as hell make sure that thing isn't leaking or seeping at all because with an enclosed cavity that could be in a dangerous place for a lot of uh, maybe gas vapors to build up. But anywho, so there you got that side. Uh, the grommet is partially stuffed in there since it was made for a smaller line. It, uh, the hose was really hard to get in there and it won't go back in its hole. But that's doing what it's supposed to do if you can see it. I can tell my phone screen's dirty. But yeah, it's still doing its job of keeping the fuel line from itself getting cut. The fuel line is much thicker, better gauge. The uh, old line, if you see in the previous video footage there when I'm underneath the car, it as soon as I tried to put a screwdriver to the clamp, it just broke, so it will last as long as it definitely could. So I lucked out doing this earlier than waiting for it to break. Now, let's go underneath. And there you go. You can see the, uh, coming through the bottom there, nice steel fuel line, going over there to the pan. The bad thing about this connection and the connection to the gas tank, it's a smooth line. It's really annoying that they did that. Um, I guess make sure you got a good clamp on it. Let's, let's tighten it properly, not over tight where it's destroyed the clamp. So it's still working. And so on. And yeah. So, okay, that's the last of that and I still got a pretty good amount wherever it went a few lines so on to replacing the last two lines that go through the engine tin from the rear of the body belly pan sorry to the fuel pump okay this small piece of hose which may be a foot not really a foot uh, so I guessed non fuel injection hose, quarter inch by the way, so there it is, quarter inch. Anyway, so I went down to my local store and said gave me five feet. Once again, working on a 1973 Super Beetle. I will show you the last two, so there you go. Maybe if you're worried that it's five ain't enough, go with six. If you want to try and risk your luck, go with four. But uh, I wouldn't push it. Anyways, so the last lines are on. Wasn't gonna like do a like, ooh, look at me do this because it's a pain in the butt. Anyways, so you've already seen that one. There's a short one here. It goes to a steel line. The steel mm -hmm. line could maybe fit in there, but then I was like, oh, that might be a bad idea because this will get exhaust temperature hot. The intake manifold, if running right, kind of stays coolish. So it's routed away from the heat. Now I'll crawl underneath it. As you can see, there's the old line as I'm crawling under it, and there's where it goes. It comes out of through the through the belly pan tube into this left driver's side leg, and the tube comes out here. Check the grommet; doesn't really matter. It's steel, but it could wind through. Uh, grommet's there, and once again, this is a smooth line, so quality clamp, proper sized hose, quarter inch seems to work. And same there, smooth pipe. You can see that's where the tube comes through the engine tin. So that line's done, so we're all good. Now I'll show you. Mm, look at my nice exhaust. Anyways, I cleaned up the vent tube lines while I was up there. That stuff. And, okay, this one here, it's got a used to clamp on it and that's all I could find it's this tiny little hose and I reuse this hose which is pretty flexible gas was coming out of this one if you take the hose off so I put a clear tube one on there into that which goes from vents out to the gas cap goes to the top of the tank this hose is halfway I move the clamp over the uh, cracks that'll fix it right well whatever uh, then I took the, you can see where I took the clear tube from, to this vent that goes over here. And this is where my fuel smell leak was. There's two. 
clear lines you can see that I made from all this clear line except for this one this one goes out to vent to the this actually goes to the charcoal canister which isn't hooked up but I'm using it to vent it outside of the cabin and I just used the T that was over on that side to tee those lines into the two nipples coming up the gas tank so that should cure my gas smell or lessen it uh check your brake fluid while you're here since I'm a dummy and changed the um, brake light switch which on these are pressure of the rest cylinder yeah that thing was almost empty like I couldn't see the level so probably the only fluid it had was in line so good time to fill it up anywho adjusted this so hopefully it will work now grease the tar out of it carry some brake fluid just in case I have a problem I like my chrome uh, spare tire. Oh, by the way, I never fixed this damage. It's not even attached up there. But I finally found the trunk floor out of a used car. So uh, once I get that pulled out of the nose of it, I will and trimmed, I will fix this mess, and it will be pretty again. So there we go. Oh yeah, push the button in. Then close the hood. I don't know. Let's see if it works. I don't think it's working. My oh, I got a dash too. If I showed you that, don't care. My that's my fancy thing. Hey, it popped. Amazing. I thought it did. Oh well. I'll work on that later. So that's it. The exhaust can go back in the other car. All I got left to do now, leave it up. Uh, I'll change plug wires. That's somewhat simple. It tells you the direction it goes on the distributor. Uh, there's even a mark. I think this is number one, I believe. Anyways, there's a mark on a 009 in most Volkswagen distributors, which one's number one. And Zond Fulsch Jump. I don't know. German can tell you how to say that. And it's 1432. So, arrow 1432. Somewhere, I don't know if you can read it or you can look it up. Like I will, just to make sure. Pretty sure that one back there is number three. I don't remember if this is, if it's three. I don't remember. I think, yeah, I think it's 43. And one and two over there. I know one of them's over here is one since the wire's going there. Let's say, hey, let's check that. So this is one. This is four. Hey, it is the first one. Four. That's three. And that's two. So <laughs> my plug wire is loose. Good thing I'm changing these. That's not how it works. Let's see here. Two. I think that's how. Yeah, oddly enough, I think that's how it is. So it's one. One, two, and then three and four. Sounds odd to me, but I will double check before I do it. And you probably should too. That's why you never trust people on the internet. They're always wrong. So that's it for now. I'll tune the carb the best I can. I'm gonna all I'm gonna do to try and get through missions is change oil. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that. Uh, it's odd when somebody tells you, hey, your car is just a few points off change the oil that sounds like why would that even work and amazingly on bugs it's works a little bit better so yes change your oil right before you th go through emissions I don't I guess maybe the oil builds hydrocarbons and blah 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 through it and then it comes to this vent tube which is not filtered and not a way to hmm, I don't know burn it off before it goes in the carburetor so I'm assuming that's why but I've never scientifically looked into it I just know it works yeah so if you're just a few points off and it probably has to be hydrocarbons or carbon dioxide I don't know but I just know it works sometimes you just don't ask questions like hmm it works so far so just do it so yeah that's it change oil uh, since I'm only having idle issues I'm going to or idle emissions issues. I'm going to lean out the idle and turn up the 
ignition timing a hair and hopefully that will work so that's about it it as I always say see ya from reverse gear Or was I done? As you can tell, it's dark here. It's actually really dark. But these Galaxy phones are kick ass. So, the new exhaust is awesome. It's actually technically a header. Hello, Cooter. What are you doing, Cooter? Anyways, yeah. That really adds quite a bit of horsepower to these little suckers. And it's, if, when you're underneath it, you'll notice it was a 4 and a 1. That's why it's a, uh, you know, it looks like. Stockish, uh, yeah, four to one, so it's decent header. And when you only got 50 horsepower and you add five or so, whatever these do, they're usually pretty good. That's a lot in one of these suckers, so yeah, it just came from a cruise. Uh, carb issue didn't realize it until I was driving down the road. The carb issue was the idle cut off solenoid. It did come loose because I went to Car Quest to try and find one shock because the crazy old lady that had this bug before she bought one shock and they don't make the shocks anymore so I'm just gonna replace the rears but I didn't really want to replace shocks unless I found some dirt cheap ones because I'm still working on the rims and if the tires and rims don't look good like they don't fit the wheel wells I want to lower it two inches or so and then I'll go with fancy KYBs Anywho, thought I'd give you one last look at it and what was the determining factor of why it was been acting up. Because it was dying a few times, but it wasn't always dying. And yeah, twisted that in tight and runs great now. And it runs like a scalded ape. The strange thing is, when I was driving there, because it had backed out a little bit more, it had less power too. And then when I screwed that thing in, man, did it run, so... Anywho, I'm out of here, and for this time, this will be a true see ya.